On behalf of Pilgrim Congregational Church, it is my deep pleasure to welcome you to this service of worship this evening. We are especially grateful to the leaders of several Duluth faith communities who are participating. We're grateful to all the musicians who are here. And we also want to invite you to enjoy some refreshments at the conclusion of the service of worship. Thanksgiving is something of a complicated holiday, especially for those of us who identify as pilgrims. The Wampanoag people, the people of the first light, are responsible for having saved those early pilgrims from starvation and death during that harsh winter of 1620-21. The age-old Wampanoag respect for nature and for using the bounty of land and sea made it possible for the Wampanoag people to share their provisions with the pilgrims. Their generosity is the basis for the legend of the first American Thanksgiving. Remembering the generosity of their spirit we acknowledge that this church where we are worshiping this evening is located on the traditional, ancestral, and contemporary land that was cared for and called home by the Ojibwe people, and before them the Dakota and Northern Cheyenne people and other native peoples from time immemorial. Seated by the Ojibwe, in an 1854 treaty, this land where we are sitting holds great historical, spiritual, and personal significance for its first stewards, the native nations and the peoples of this region. But that is only one of several Thanksgiving complications this year in particular. For the past many weeks and months, along with so many of you, I have experienced a kind of heart sickness, the source of which was articulated in a recent article in The Atlantic. The writer, Paul Post, wondered about the fact that the past two years have seen the most armed conflicts of any time since the Second World War. The Uppsala Conflict Data Program, which has been tracking wars globally since 1945, identified the years 2022 and 2023 as the most conflictual years in the world since the end of the Cold War. United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina J. Mohammed sounded the alarm, noting that peace is now under a grave threat. And so the theme of this service coalesced in my mind. How shall we give thanks in this time of war? I sent words from Paul Carnes to my congregation and to my ministry colleagues asking them to suggest other readings. Many of the readings for this service come from them. Other readings, along with the Thanksgiving music, were added. And so here we are, praying for peace, grateful for the many blessings we have received, hoping for a better tomorrow, and singing, worshiping, and praying together as we are so privileged to do. So let us begin with this prayer written by Paul Carnes. Many and varied are the gifts that have been bestowed upon us. Some have come as a legacy from those whose names will be forever hidden from us, removed by time or distance. To whom shall we give thanks but to thee, O God? 
But in our thanksgiving, may we remember not only that which gave us pleasure, but also that which brought us disappointment, pain, and suffering. For we know that all that we have met has helped us to become who we are and will shape the ends we seek. If tomorrow should bring new disappointments and new sufferings, so that words of thanksgiving lie unuttered on our tongues, enable us then to pray that the day will come when we can be thankful for whatever harsh road we have been forced to travel, that in such darkness we may see light. Amen. seated. In a year when this nation was divided and in a year when we were at war, Abraham Lincoln wrote these words. The, excuse me, the year that is drawing close, drawing to its close has been filled with blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added. In the midst of a civil war of unequaled magnitude and severity, which has sometimes seemed to foreign states to invite and provoke their regressions, peace has been preserved with all nations Order has been maintained, the laws have been respected and obeyed, and harmony has prevailed everywhere except in the theater of military conflict. Needful diversions of wealth 
and of strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. Population has steadily increased, notwithstanding the waste that has been made at the camp, the siege, and the battlefield. No human council has devised nor hath any mortal man hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the high, most high God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nonetheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, re reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. And I recommend to them they do also commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged, and fervently implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purpose to the full enjoyment of peace. President Abraham Lincoln.
Unitarian Universalism is a covenantal faith tradition, and we are guided by eight principles that we share as our deepest values about how to be together in our communities. In our seventh principle, we say, quote, we covenant to affirm and promote respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. This principle reminds us of our essential interconnectedness with one another and with all of creation. We seek to honor that interconnectedness with deep gratitude, respect, and a fierce love. This poem by the Reverend Gary Kowalski expresses gratitude for the astonishing web of life in which we live our lives and have our being. We thank you, sky, for your blue. Also, breeze, for what you do. Everything simple, undivided, and too ordinary to be tried as true. The sound of rain when we're warm inside. Purple shadows on the mountainside. Help us to notice, open our eyes, Give us grateful hearts and unclinging minds that we might be as one and at peace when our stories told as much a part of nature as the beauty that we behold. I'm sure there are many pieces to the puzzle that helps and assists us in these times that are difficult, times that are joyful and sorrowful. Maybe one of the pieces tonight that I'm appreciating and being gathered together is the piece of gratitude. So a piece about gratitude. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. It turns problems into gifts, Failures into successes, the unexpected into perfect timing, and mistakes into important events. It can turn an existence into a real life, and disconnected situations into important and beneficial lessons. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow.
This poem makes me thankful for the resilience God inspires and enables. A Vision by Wendell Berry. If we will have the wisdom to survive, to stand like slow-growing trees on a ruined place, renewing, enriching it, if we will make our seasons welcome here, asking not too much of earth or heaven, then a long time after we are dead, the lives our lives prepare will live there. Their houses strongly placed upon the valley sides, fields and gardens rich in the windows, the river will run clear as we will never know it, and over it birdsong like a canopy. On the levels of the hills will be green meadows, stock bells in noon shade. On the steeps, where greed and ignorance cut down the old forest, an old forest will stand, its rich leaf fall drifting on its roots. The veins of forgotten springs will have opened. Families will be singing in the fields. In their voices, they will hear a music risen out of the ground. They will take nothing from the ground. They will not return. Whatever the grief at parting. Memory native to this valley will spread over it like a grove and memory will grow into legend, legend into song, song into sacrament. The abundance of this place, the songs of its people and its birds will be health and wisdom and indwelling light. This is no paradisal dream. Its hardship is its possibility. So here we all are, people of various denominations and faith traditions gathered here tonight for this act of thanksgiving. Chum joins in this act of thanksgiving as we observe our 50th anniversary, 50 years of people of faith working together to provide basic needs and foster stable lives and to organize for a just and compassionate community. The circle has been drawn wide, and there is need for it to be drawn wider still. So I draw your attention to the first verse of the first hymn we sang. Come ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in before the winter storms begin. As I think of the over 500 people in Duluth who regularly live outside because they have no home, I know Chum tries to provide a space so that they can be safely gathered in. I know that as we operate around the clock every day without fail, we provide food over 500 pounds, 500,000 pounds annually. We provide shelter to over 1,300 people annually. We provide this food and shelter to nourish weary souls potential for a godly harvest. We want to keep them safely gathered in before 
the winter storms begin. God, our maker, provides for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come raise the song of harvest home. You have come to God's temple to raise the song of harvest home. Your offering tonight will help us raise that song of harvest home. Help chum be that hand of God meeting the needs of the wheat among the tears, the unpopular, the unlovely, those sick, unable to care for themselves, weaker, less respectable, unpresentable, inferior, those scorned, rejected, those marginalized and oppressed, those without a place to lay their heads, those of our brothers and sisters who fill up our drop-in center, our shelter, and the warming center. Through our programs, we foster stable lives. First the blade, then the air, you look for the full corn to appear. I invite us all to in this harvest share, give generously for chum and raise the song of harvest home. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل ہو اللہ احد اللہ الصمد لم یلید ولم یولاد ولم یا قل لہو قف و نحد چیپٹر ون ہنڈریڈ ٹویلو آف دا ہولی قرآن دا ڈیکلریشن آف گاڈس یونیٹی ٹوڈے وی آر ہیئر ٹو وی آر ہیئر ٹوگیدر ٹو گیو تھنگس اینڈ ایز وی گیو تھنگس اٹس امپورٹنٹ ٹو give thanks to those who have come before us to guide those who are coming after us. So please join me in a dua, a prayer, for the mercy of our parents, for the mercy of our grandparents, for the mercy of our guardians. Rabbir hamhuma kama rabbayana sagira. My Lord, be merciful to them, my parents, as they have raised me when I was young. Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, verse 24. Rabbir arhumham kama rabbayana sagira. The Lord has decreed upon you that you worship none but him and that you be kind to your parents. Whether one or both of them ob obtain old age in your life, say not to them a word of contempt, nor repeal them, nor address them, in any other terms other than honor. One of the best things you can do is to, is to be consistently cons uh, sincere in your prayer for them, even if they're no longer with us. The prophet encouraged us to keep praying for our parents, and indeed it is the prayer that will benefit them. The, the prophet also lets us know that when a person dies, his deeds come to an end, except for the, for the three. A continuous charity, knowledge that others benefit from, and a pious child who continues to pray for them. So today we pray for our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors, and we pray for the future generations to come. And we grieve the loss of the parents who had their children taken away from them due to conflict, and we grieve for the children who have lost their parents. Thank you.
So in, in Judaism, uh, in, in effect, every day is Thanksgiving Day. Uh, this uh, Birkat, Hoda, Birkat Hoda'ah, blessing of Thanksgiving, is part of our daily liturgy, 365 days a year. Modim anach nulach, she'ata hu Adonai Eloheinu ve'lohe avotenu ve'imotenu le'olam v'ed. Tzur chayenu magen yeshenu ata hu l'dor v'ador. Nodelecha unasaperti latecha al chayenu hamsurim biyadecha ve'al nishmotenu hapagudot lach ve'al nisecha she'bechol yom imanu ve'al niflotecha v'tovatecha she'bechol et erev v'voker v'tzohorayim. Hatov ki lo chalu rachamecha v'ham rachem ki lo tamu chasadecha me'olam ki vinu lach. Ve'al kulam yitporach v'it romam shimcha malkenu tamid le'olam v'ed. Ve'chol ha'chayim yodu ha'sela v'yalu et shimcha be'emet ha'el yishuatenu ve'ezratenu sela. Baruch ata Adonai ha'tov shimcha u'lecha na'e lehodot. We thank you for you are our God and the God of our ancestors forever. Rock of our lives, shield of our salvation, you are the one from generation to generation. We thank you and tell of your praises regarding our lives, which are in your hands, regarding our souls, which are entrusted to you, regarding your miracles, which are with us every day, and regarding your wonders and favors, which are with us every moment, evening, morning, and noon. You are good, for your compassion is never ending. You are compassionate, for your kindness never cease. Our hope has always been in you. For all these things, we bless and exalt your name, our sovereign, constantly and forever. All living things will acknowledge and thank you, and may they praise your name in truth, O God, who saves and helps us, Selah. Blessed are you, Adonai. Your essence is goodness, and to you it is pleasing to offer thanksgiving. Amen.
Today I make my sacrament of thanksgiving. I begin with the simple things of my days. Fresh air to breathe. Cool water to drink. The taste of food. The protection of houses and clothes. The comforts of home. For these I make an act of thanksgiving this day. I bring to mind all the warmth of humankind that I have known. My mother's arms, the strength of my father, the playmates of my childhood, the wonderful stories brought to me from the lives of many who talked of days gone by when fairies and giants and all kinds of magic held sway, the tears I have shed, the tears I have seen, the excitement of laughter and the twinkle in the eye with its reminder that life is good. For, For all these, I make an act, act of thanksgiving, of thanksgiving this, this day. day. I finger one by one the messages of hope that waited me at the crossroads. The smile of approval from those who held in their hands the reins of my security. The tightening of the grip in a single handshake when I feared the step before me in the darkness. The whisper in my heart when the temptation was fiercest and the claims of appetite were not to be denied. The crucial word said, the simple sentence from an open page when my decision hung in the balance. For, For all, all these, these I, I make, make an, an act, act of thanksgiving, thanksgiving this day. day. I pass before me the mainsprings of my heritage, the fruits of the labors of countless generations who lived before me, without whom my own life would have no meaning, the seers who saw visions and dreamed dreams, the prophets who sensed a truth greater than the mind could grasp and whose words could only find fulfillment in the years which they would never see, the workers who sweat watered the trees, the leaves of which are for the healing of the nations, the pilgrims who set their sails for lands beyond all horizons, whose courage made paths into new worlds and far off places, the saviors whose blood was shed with a recklessness that only a dream could inspire and God could command. For, for all, all these, these, I, I make an, an act, act of thanksgiving, thanksgiving this day. day. I linger over the meaning of my own life and the commitment to which I give the loyalty of my heart and mind. The little purposes in which I have shared with my love, my desires, my gifts. The restlessness which bottoms all I do with its stark insistence that I have never done my best. I have never dared to reach for the highest. The big hope that never quite deserts me, that I and my kind will study war no more, that love and tenderness and all the inner graces of almighty affection will cover the life of the children of God as the waters cover the sea. All these and more than mind can think and heart can feel, I make as my sacrament of thanksgiving to thee, our God, in humbleness of mind and simplicity of heart.
Beloved of God, we know, we trust, and we believe that God hears the prayers of everyone, every child, every woman, every man, every family, every soldier, every heart broken in war. Beloved, God has heard our prayers this night. May the blessing of this night fill your hearts with hope. Amen.